Hey everyone, this is David Brown from Lyco Birds with the Broadwinged Hawk migration update for Tuesday, September 15th, 2020. Let's jump over to Hawk Count. And my prediction that was that today was going to be a pretty good day across the Mid Atlantic and New England. Um, there's a high pressure system sitting over the region that brought sunny skies and most places had light winds. And the numbers from today reflect that. So let me go through some of the high counts from today. Let's start with Rockfish Gap in Virginia. We see they had almost 7,000 broadwings. So I know a lot of people won't want to hear that because it means there's a lot of birds that have made it past us already. But they were the biggest that I saw in the east. Take a look at Allegheny Front, Pennsylvania. Again, this is southwest Pennsylvania. 4,700 broadwings. So this uh, is similar to what happened last year where we were watching Allegheny Front get huge numbers while everyone east of them suffered a little bit. So um, hopefully that won't continue to be the trend this whole broadwing hawk migration season, but Allegheny Front has done well the past two days. Let's take a look at Clary Hill, Maine, 2,300. So, thankfully, there's still a lot of birds to the north of us. Who's this? Cromwell Valley Park in Maryland, 1100, which was a little disappointing for me to see because my hawk watch, which is the Ashland Hawk Watch in northern Delaware, we normally think of us as getting the birds before Cromwell gets them. Um, but at Ashland, we only had about uh, less than 300 broadwings today and most of them were very distant views. So um, I think the northeasterly winds that we had just blew the birds a little farther west from us. Um, but certainly there were birds moving in the region and Cromwell got good totals. Jack's Mountain in central Pennsylvania, 2,700. Good total for them. Um, excellent day. Let's continue on to Putney Mountain, Vermont, about 1,200. Raccoon Ridge, New Jersey, in the mountains, 1,200. And Snickers Gap, Virginia, about 1,700. Let's take a look at the weather prediction for tomorrow from the Weather Channel. So we can see a high pressure system over top of the region. So we'll expect sunny skies again. Now, one thing that may have been a factor with today's counts was that Everyone, as far as I saw, everyone in the region had cloudless skies, but there was haze from the forest fires out west. The smoke from those fires has carried all the way across the country, and it was really eerie this morning watching the sun come up. You could, you could basically look at it with your bare eye, not that that's a smart thing to do ever, but there was so much haze and smoke in the atmosphere. It just made everything look orange, and it was just weird. Um, otherwise it would have been blue skies of death, but it, it was just hazy all day. And I know some sites in their comments from today mentioned that that was a factor in being able to, um, in having some difficulty spotting birds. And, uh, we certainly had that haze at Ashland today. I don't know that it really affected us too much. We never had big groups of broadwings come over. Um, but definitely, um, an interesting factor that could have, um, could have affected how strong the thermals were. Maybe the um, the thermals weren't as strong because the sun was partially blocked. And if we um, look into Wednesday afternoon and evening, again, high pressure system, we see some fronts that are gonna be moving across um, going through Thursday or Thursday evening into Friday, depending on your location. Um, I know here in Delaware, we're expecting some rainy weather on Friday. Um, let's jump over to windy and take a look at the winds. So this was the wind today, Tuesday, the 15th at 11 a.m. So we can see just across the whole region, pretty much light winds down here in Delaware, where I am, we had moderate Northeast winds. I think that pushed the broad wings a little West of us. If we jump ahead to tomorrow. We see southerly winds across the region. And um, as the day goes on, they're going to get stronger. If we jump to tomorrow afternoon, 4 p.m., 
strong southerly winds. So um, in the morning, it'll be sunny again. If the wind stays light enough, there could be broad wings moving. But um, these strong southerly winds will definitely be working against us overall. If we jump to Thursday now, um, we're back to light winds throughout the region. We can kind of see the wind shifting as the front moves across with uh, northerly winds behind the front. Um, if we look at Friday, we have northerly winds, but I know at least down in my region, um, it'll be cloudy and rainy, so probably won't be that good of a day. But then after that, um, the winds are staying northerly. Here's Saturday, northeast winds quite strong, and um, the winds are going to stay northerly for quite a few days, and um, we're going to have just uh, a lot of northeast winds and sunny days. We jump to Sunday. Again, northeast winds throughout the region, sunny skies. Monday, same thing, still northeast. Finally, Tuesday, it'll be shifting northwest. Um, some regions, it'll be very uh, light winds. Down where I'm at, still moderate winds. And as we go into Wednesday, the 23rd, we see those northerly winds shifting more west. So that's the forecast for about the next week. Um, we'll have to keep an eye on what the broad wings are doing. Um, Again, southerly winds tomorrow, is that going to hold them up? And then after that, some clouds and some rain. Um, and then as we move into the weekend, we're looking at northeast winds. Are those northeast winds going to be too strong and disrupt the thermals? Um, or will the broad wings be moving on them? We'll have to see. But that's my um, analysis of today's totals and my prediction for the next week. So everyone, good luck at your hawk watches and good birding. This is David Brown. Thanks for watching.